1260 KDUZ News, I'm Mark Wodarczyk. American hikers Shane Bauer and Josh Fatal, released from jail in Iran, arrived on a plane in Oman yesterday to be greeted by family and friends, Minnesota native Shane Bauer. Two years in prison is too long. Josh Fatal had these comments. We are so happy we are free and so relieved we are free. Documents obtained by the Associated Press describe New York Police Department surveillance of American citizens because of their ethnicity and not because of any wrongdoing. The program involved people of Moroccan ancestry, and they show police also intended to build intelligence files on other ethnicities. Minnesota National Guard soldiers are playing an important role in the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Iraq. The number of American troops there is expected to fall to about 40,000 by the end of September. Captain Randy Belden says the 1st Brigade Combat Team of the 31st, uh, 34th Infantry Division is involved in Operation New Dawn, which is the uh, drawdown phase of U.S. military operations in Iraq. And they have brigadists uh, headquartered in Kuwait, and they are performing uh, force protection operations in support of U.S. forces in Kuwait. More than 2,400 troops from 500 communities across the state deployed with the Red Bull Division this summer. Belden says he's not aware of any future deployments of Minnesota soldiers to Iraq. A prior lake man has been found guilty of criminal sexual conduct in the first degree by a Carver County jury. The jury found 37-year-old Travis Allen Olson guilty Tuesday. Carver County attorney Mark Metz says the jury heard evidence that between January 2008 and April 2008, Olson lived with his girlfriend and his girlfriend's 12-year-old daughter in the city of Chaska. When the mother was working night shifts, Olson asked the child whether she would like to come into his bedroom. The child testified that on several occasions she agreed to go into the bedroom and Olson engaged in sexual intercourse with her. After Olson moved out of the home in April of 2008, the child frequently met Olson at a gas station. The child testified that Olson drove her to various parks and hiking trails where the two engaged in sexual intercourse. Olson has two prior convictions for criminal sexual conduct and is currently registered as a level three predatory offender. Olson remains in jail in lieu of $100,000 cash bail or $1 million bond. A sentencing date hasn't been set yet. Metz says the attorney's office will be seeking the maximum sentence allowed under the law. The parents of 520 children received automatic phone calls Tuesday morning saying their children were not in school in Nevis. That led to 100 calls that jammed the school district's lines from parents wondering where their children were. The superintendent of the small school district in northern Minnesota says it was a glitch and the system worked fine yesterday. Self-help author James Arthur Ray says in a pre-sentence report that he won't con- uh, conduct any more sweat lodge ceremonies. Ray is awaiting sentencing next month for the deaths of a Minnesota woman and two other people during a ceremony in Arizona in 2009. He expressed remorse for the victims, but says he hasn't tried to contact the families. Minnesota's apple harvest is underway, but officials warn residents who want to send Minnesota Honeycrisps and Sweet Tangos west of the Rockies that their shipments might not get there. Minnesota Plant Protection Director Gear Frizo says apples can be shipped to California, Arizona, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington only if they're sent through an orchard certified by the Minnesota Department of Agriculture and accompanied by papers showing they're free from pests and diseases. Senator Amy Klobuchar has received the 2011 Fueling Growth Award for her dedication and support of domestic renewable fuels. The award was presented at the Growth Energy's annual legislative conference. Klobuchar, the first person to get the award. Klobuchar is a member of the Senate Ag Committee and is chairman of the Senate Commerce Subcommittee on Competitiveness, Innovation, and Export Promotion. A press release states Klobuchar worked closely with House Ag Committee Chairman Colin Peterson to pass a farm bill that made farm programs more efficient and accountable, expanded the market for biofuels, and strengthened the safety net for farmers and rural communities that support thousands of jobs in every corner of the state. The focus for President Obama today turns back to jobs and the campaign. ABC's Chuck Sievertson. Focus in the White House. Jobs and the presidential destination will not be a bridge to nowhere, but a bridge to an important swing state, Ohio, connecting Cincinnati and Covington, Kentucky, according to ABC News White House correspondent Ann Compton. He's already getting a bit of flack for what some see as a photo op by a bridge that is not shovel-ready for the job spending he's proposing. 
The Brent Spence Bridge, named for a longtime congressman, carries two interstates, a lot of heavy truck traffic, and it's so worn out the leading option seems to be just replacing the landmark. Ohio and Kentucky are the respective home states of Republican House Speaker John Boehner and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Boehner says he's disappointed. The president's decided uh, to forget his role as president and leader of our nation in a time of economic uncertainty and to begin the campaign for his re-election. A White House spokesman called on Republican leaders in Congress to work with Democrats to do something to create jobs. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News. Republican presidential candidate Michelle Bachman's campaign is bringing on Iowa advisor Eric Wilson to help the Minnesota Congresswoman's campaign for the Iowa caucuses. Wilson of West Des Moines is a veteran Republican campaign operative who most recently was an advisor to Tim Pawlenty's campaign before the former Minnesota governor left the race for the 2012 GOP nomination last month. He was also 2008 Iowa caucus winner Mike Huckabee's state director during the former Arkansas governor's campaign four years ago. Bachman appears to have struggled since winning the August Iowa straw poll. Texas Governor Rick Perry entered the race the same day as that test vote and has taken the lead in national polls. Abby Pop reporting. A week of soaking rain has helped crews make significant progress in containing the big forest fire in northeastern Minnesota, but the rain is coming to an end and firefighters are getting ready for another challenge. Friday we start five-day warm-up dry period where we'll see the fuel start drying out. And with that we'll start to see uh, more smoke puffing up from the fire and we'll have to start paying attention to that more and be wary of anything building up that might try and spread out. Spokesman Doug Anderson says the fire is about one-third contained and more than 780 personnel are involved in the firefighting effort. Nonprofit organizations are again asking Minnesotans to give to the max. The third annual Give to the Max Day will be held November 16th. The goal is to raise as much money as possible for Minnesota charities in 24 hours. The campaign has raised more than $33 million for more than 5,000 nonprofits since debuting in 2009. As we head into fall, there is an especially notable wildlife display waiting for travelers in western Minnesota. It's a big old prairie chicken. It's a 35-year-old statue of a prairie chicken, the world's largest in the town of Rothsay. At the time, the DNR determined that uh, Rothsay was the prairie chicken capital of the state. Art Fossey built the 13-foot-tall prairie chicken out of steel and cement. It weighs 9,000 pounds and is perched near I-94 at a rest stop named for Fossey. Trayvon Robinson's two-run single broke a two-all tie, and Seattle went on to beat Minnesota yesterday 5-4. Here's the pitch. Robinson swings and lines a hit to right field. One hop in front of Benson. Here's a strong throw to the plate, and scoring on the play will be Olivo, along with Pena in front, and it's now a 4-2 lead for the 